Richard, we kick off with an open question. How's business? Business is good. The LNG industry is in a huge growth phase right now, and we're a part of that. Now, Richard, turning to today's event, what for you have been the key talking points? Uh, there's been a lot of interesting things that uh, have come forward today. Training was uh, covered this morning. That's a key area for the entire LNG industry. We're already in a big fleet expansion, so we're deeply into that uh, program with our own officers. Um, so it was interesting to hear some of the uh, give and take as far as what some other people are doing. Um, and then uh, just now, uh, some new technologies as far as uh, cargo transfer in, in near shore terminals that um, uh, may be uh, able to be built fairly easily. Um, and that has an implication of expanding the, the wider uh, range of terminals that can be serviced by the marine industry, which is uh, we're an LNG shipping company, so that has interest to us. If we home in on the training, traditionally the LNG industry has been able to pick off from other sectors when it's been in a growth phase, but LPG is growing markedly. What innovative way can we really tackle this crew shortage issue? I think everybody has to come at it from their own, uh, with their own perspective and uh, whatever resources each of the companies may have. In our case, um, we're fortunate we're part of a bigger uh, shipping group, so we have the ability to take some officers from our tanker uh, division and train them to be LNG officers. Um, we are Greek flag and have Greek officers, and so in a way we are also um, a beneficiary of the downturn, the economic downturn in Greece, and that a lot of people are now interested in coming to sea, and uh, so there's a large pool now of cadets, and we're taking in every year the largest amount of cadets in the Greek uh, maritime community um, and training them up, and um, we're also have been fortunate um, in a way by taking, uh, as the cruise industry in Greece has gone retracted some, uh, we have been taking some engineers in particular over to the LNG ships because the technology in the engine room uh, with medium speed diesels and in some cases on cruise ships, uh, diesel electric is similar to what we're now doing on our new vessels with diesel electric but tri-fuel so they can also burn gas. But that's uh, us a small addition to what the knowledge base of an existing engineer would have. You alluded to the technology and innovative presentations in your session. There was one from Norway and a lot of discussion around the hose handling aspects. Yes, and um, this is an area that the industry in general is focused on because there are uh, not just this own particular innovation that's been discussed, um, the same type of application of hoses uh, has relevance for offshore terminals for other areas around the world where there are different um, and new terminal concepts coming forward. Um, so it's an area that the industry is focused on. A lot of development work is going on there. Um, and I'm sure within 10 years we'll all be using cryogenic hoses on uh, various types of transfer, not all the time, but from time to time when we go to some of these other terminals. Now, your presentation focused on fueling the, fu fueling the fleet in the future. There was also quite a campaigning element to it as well, I thought. Yes, it was addressing the, uh, the requirements coming into effect in uh, 1st of January 2015 for um, the Marpole Annex 6 sulfur limitations. And um, there's particular, each, each type of vessel has its own issues with meeting that, um, these new regulations. For the steam LNG ships, uh, there are three potential solutions. Uh, one is to modify the vessels to burn uh, marine gas oil. Um, there are some um, complications in, in taking that approach, and it's a rather expensive approach. Um, and many ships call only once or twice a year in uh, the ECA. So uh, for them, it may not be the best solution. Um, the approach that we're looking at is something called equivalency, burning natural gas, which is abundantly available on these LNG ships, uh, with a small pilot flame which of a fuel that may be higher than 0.1% sulfur content. Um, and now the EU recently has come out with, a, uh, with clarity that um, for fuels up to 0.5% sulfur, uh, they think equivalency is acceptable solution. And now our Greek flag has gone forward with that, and I know some other European flags have also gone forward on that basis. Um, a third solution, which has only recently become available, is heavy fuel oil that has 
a sulfur content of just 0.1%. Um, so it automatically on its own meets the new regulations. And this is also a good fuel for these high pressure marine boilers. It's an easy to handle fuel um, and the existing boiler controls all would handle this very well. So um, any of these solutions can work. And I think the last two will help to serve a wide number of LNG ships, steam LNG ships that may infrequently call in the ECAs. And even some that call frequently may find that these are good solutions for them. Finally, Richard, you've been in attendance throughout this conference. There are a welter of LNG events. You probably get emails once a week asking you to attend. Has this one differentiated itself from the herd? I think it's, um, I've been impressed by the quality of the papers and uh, it's a intimate setting that um, I think it has a good um, interaction with the audience. And so uh, I think because of that, it, it offers a rich environment for both knowledge sharing and also interaction with, uh, with others that are in, in the industry that are interested in the similar topics.